Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Wednesday, and we have work to do. We need to look at the midweek on commodities, gold, silver, oil, uh, copper, all that good stuff. One thing I would like to mention is that I just did a video on the uranium midweek update where I used a different technique with moving averages and the Bollinger Bands. So if you want to check that out, that would be, maybe it's something for you, but uh, that was the setup that I used when I started to do technical analysis. Uh, so yeah, worth checking out. If not, let's get straight into business here. As always, thumbs up, please. And subscription also would be very nice if you like what you what you see, obviously. If not, then uh, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Alrighty. Silver. Good old silver here getting rejected at that upper resistance right here, the golden one here. And now we are just sitting on top of that neckline. Invert head and shoulders at the bottom. And I think I tweeted that as well, getting above 24.2 should, should, again, it's silver, but it should mean that we are in for the big run. Uh, the reason why, why I'm saying that is if you go and watch the other video that I just did on uranium, we have a weekly power node here. And what that is, you can check that out in, in the video. I will, I have, a, I have a made a, a small explanation on what I call a power node and what it is and how it is used. Check it out if you want to, but I think getting about that 24.2 will be major. Again, then we will we will charge, in my view, breaking here, we will charge and attack that big blue bad boy right here, going back to the highs of 2021, uh, 20, excuse me. And that will be, with a good probability, let's say, game on. Game on for sure. For some reason, the... No, I don't want you. I don't want you. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. I just want to add this one in. I will do it as quickly as I possibly can. So I won't take much of your time, really. All right, there it is. Good. So that's silver. 24.2, big, big level. And currently we're sitting on top of that neckline. So hopefully that holds and we we boom higher. Really, it is what it is. Gold at a double top kind of scenario here. You can see if we go into the, let's go, go to the four hourly. What is happening today is the double top here. And now we're just testing that long term, well, not long term, but one month long trend line here, getting back to 1990 and hopefully it holds and we go higher, really. That is really where we are. And I think when that breaks, when and if that breaks here, I also tweeted that 2010, we will go to the all-time highs. Test that, wiggle around. Let's see what happens. But I think that will be the last hurdle to test the all-time high, which has been tested. <clears throat> we, we have reached that three times. And this could be the fourth if we get there. Um, let's see. The gold to silver ratio, <clears throat> I was very scared here, you know, very, very scared. And we started to break down, which gave me relief. We're not out of the woods yet. We are testing, you know, these that green double rail right there, and we're getting a bounce. So so let's see where we go. But uh, I do think that this false breakout will make us finally collapse in the gold to silver ratio. Again, I need the confirmation. You have the big, big level here, that long-term orange bad boy. And we had some wiggles below. Clearly, it didn't want to go. But hopefully, that false breakout here is when we go to the downside. Hopefully. Hopefully. But for now, you know, it can... I do favor the downside, but it could be anyone's guess at the moment. You don't know the direction here until you get the confirmation. But I will say this. Getting above 88, that would spell disaster, meaning that gold will outperform silver big time. And that is exactly not what you want to see in the ratio. Um, quickly here, nothing much to mention for for the, the Dixie. I do think that we are in for some sort of retrace up to the just a tad below 105 to do some retesting of that level. That was a big breakdown here. So I think that is where we're going. We're also pretty stretched here from the moving averages. So I think we could be in for a move here and then hopefully it starts to roll over even further down. The Dixie, 
excuse me, the 10 year yield, same thing again here. I think we are squeezing up here, as you can see, down towards what level? Yes, you know, roughly 4.33%. And I think we will get some sort of bounce here. But I think overall, we are going lower before going way higher in the future. Um, so I do think we're squeezing down here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of pop here. And then we should start to roll over again. That is my take on that. Uh, very interesting things here on oil, actually. I will go to the one hourly with you to show some beautiful technicals. We came, we broke down here from the green big time. And I said on Twitter that I think a bounce to the green front line is where we're going. Why? Because it is a breakdown line from here to here. And often you get the retest. It is as simple as that. And then today, oh, sorry, I just messed it up here for you guys. I hope you can follow me. And today we actually had a huge collapse here. And now we have gained, uh, grinded it all back quick time here. So if we get above, I will show you this one, my level or my line to go above is that blue bad boy right there. The reasoning being actually that then we have a very skewed, but still very valid inverted head and shoulders on the one hourly. And we're getting back into and above the green trend line, which is now resistance. Uh, so let's see. I mean, this is definitely worth looking at that V-shape right there. So we need to get above, let's call it 78. Then I will start to say, all right, maybe oil has some, some upside to do. But for now, it's still in the downtrend. Zooming out here on uh, palladium. Palladium is doing what we had as an option. We had two options, as you know, boom, break up there or a false breakdown here. We have Now we have the false breakdown. Uh, and what we want to see is a snap back here and then retest and then boom. So for now, uh, you know, the downside could still be that we are rolling over, obviously, but if we get above and down, that's when you should be paying attention. And I do think that way too many people are getting short. This is a long-term falling wedge, right? So we should see a snap back to the upside again. This can still take months before we get that confirmation, but it's definitely worth following. The platinum here, nothing much is happening really. We are still working on what I think is that inverted head and shoulders with the neckline, uh, left uh, head and right shoulder. The only thing that you, that you can note here is that we are having some sort of range here and hopefully we can get to the upside. So that is all that I'm looking at. Again, I want to get above uh, 1,000, then I'm very bullish. Getting above 1,000, I think we will get back to the neckline, and then we will be off to the races. So 1,000 is a big level, a big number to get through, but I think when and if we do, that is when you should be, pay attention to, to, to platinum, really. Also, what you should be, should be paying attention to is copper. So we have a breakdown here, and we are retesting. We actually have a bit of a peak here above. So this was a false breakdown in, in the making. It still could be anyone's guess where we're going. However, I will say this. If we can get above that topping tail right there, I think copper is in for a run. So if we can hold that and get back above, then copper looks fantastic. Um, on the daily, I want to show you again, this is still one big retest in the making. So if we start to retest and we grind lower, yes, that is it. Uh, that is not clearly not good for copper. So the levels are very, very clear in my view. Getting below again, 3.5, very bad. If we can get back above 3.8, three, it's a different scenario for copper really. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see what happens here. Again, I think it's a 70, 30 to the downside, maybe, uh, maybe a bit lower, but still that is, if I were to give any, any numbers on it, uh, the daily here, net gas. We are bouncing up from that golden trend line here. So if we lose that, then we have more downside. If this one gives in, then this gap will close. That's my take. So we will go down here. And then ultimately, I think we'll go all the way down to 2.5 if this doesn't hold. That is my that is my guess here. And uh, yeah, same thing for the uh, TTF, the Dutch, uh, the European gas. We have the uptrend here. So if this needs to hold, otherwise we will close the gap and then we will go to go down to 35 on the gas. Again, the winter here is somewhat 
in Europe at least, is somewhat uh, mild. So maybe that is the case. I'm trying to show you guys here that you know we do have some sort of wedge going on here. So let's see where we go. Nothing new on the coal front again. For now, a technical bounce at the 2018 high. Let's not use any more brain power on that one. Uh, good old Bitcoin here. Uh, up, uh, just whipsaw every. It's just amazing what's happening here. You know, down five percent, up five percent, and now you have a big level to get through, which is let's call it thirty-eight. Uh, if that happens, then we will meet very quickly the target uh, of roughly forty-two point five k. From that long-term inverted head and shoulders here, you have the target that will be met very quickly when if that happens. Uh, the downside for Bitcoin, if that happens, clearly, if we take out that. Right here, this golden trend line here. If that gives in, then in my view, we are going down to 31, 32K also very, very quickly. Uh, and I was sure yesterday that this was uh, the final thing that broke, but today we are up 5%. So clearly all over the place, all over the place, good old Bitcoin here. Very strong to my surprise, but this was this, the charts does not lie. Again, we're just, we are at 80 bucks for Uranium spot price again. If this, um, again, if this is the pullback that we're getting for getting up to the Fukushima highs, that tiny bit there, holy smokes, the momentum is just insane. Um, again, as long as we are above, it is support, clearly. And now we're going into a major gap, which is at roughly 100. So I think the path of least resistance now is all the way to 100. Um, Again, it, it it's quite insane to say because I really thought that we would get more of a pullback here. As mentioned, you know, getting some sort of sideways action here and then higher, but still we are just, it's a one-way street at the moment. Uh, hopefully, let's say we go very sharply up to a hundred, we are going parabolic. So again, when things go parabolic, I'm always, at least for the shorter term that, that could mean a sharp pullback. I th again, I think long term we will go above 140 and and beyond. But still, in the short term, if we go very parabolic here, then we should be in for a, a, a short term correction. Sugar, nothing much to mention here. Again, bit of a grindy grindy stuff going. We have the bull flag here. Still some grinding stuff here, and uh, yeah, the bull flag target is 30 33. But nothing has happened for the past two months or so, three months. So let's not use any more on that. So it means, again, holding the breakout trend line here, still holding, still holding, needs to hold. And as always, we need to get back above the breakout high at roughly 1,400. That confirms the breakout and the uptrend on the weekly basis. And so that is it. That is it. And if that happens, we will go all the way up here to roughly 1,570 very quickly. And then we will retest that neckline here. And we have some resistance coming across the horizontal line here as well. So that will be a, a spot to where we will have a pause, really. Nickel, we will not look into nickel because it, well, let's maybe look into it. I know that uh, the chart is messed up for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, very quickly here, the silver to M2 money supply. Again, silver, I think if we get above 24.2, uh, that also means we will break that one right here. And... Again, I think all hell breaks loose when that happens. That is when silver will start to heavily outperform the M2 money supply. I really, really, truly believe that. Looking at it from a long term here, as you know, and now we are bullish here, expanding, and then boom, this will be a rocket ship like no other. Gold looking very, very bullish versus M2 money supply. Blue bull flag broken, retested, and now really wants to get above. Again, 2010. Dollars, I think, will be the break here as well. So the breakout high will get taken out, and then we off to the races. Um, I think gold and silver looks absolutely fantastic here again. We are so close to break to really do some some good damage to the upside, and um, yeah, we kind of celebrate obviously, but I'm I'm excited, um, really really excited for once um, for gold and silver and the miners as well. I mean, I'm. Uh, Looking at the silver miners, they are hated. This, the sentiment is just down the drain. And I think the when and if we, we get above that those levels on the gold and silver, I, I think, <coughs> excuse me, 
I think gold and silver miners will do amazingly. Um, uh, I will I will even say that some gold and silver miners have better risk reward right now than uranium miners, maybe. Uh, that is how bullish I am. Okay, enough of a rant from me. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. As always, go back to the uranium midweek that I just did. Different view with moving averages. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. It is what it is. Guys, have a great one. Thumbs up, like, comment. You know what to do. Cheers, guys. Bye.